I'm Ollie and Barbara Bess. Um, I serve the city um, in the capacity of the 5th Ward, and I also serve the entire city of New Bern as well. Um, this is this week at City Hall, and I'm so glad that each one of you um, come out to the part of your day to be present here and give your stories of some of your experiences with um, the city. But first of all, I want each one of you to introduce yourself, give your address, and um, the community that you live in. And then we'll start from there. And I'll go with Mr. I mean, Commissioner Sampson. I just like, <coughs> I live saying now, uh, we call it Double Field. I live on Sampson Street in Double Field. They used to be different names, like they just call it Paper Town. That's been a long time ago. But I've been living up there all my life. I, my mama <coughs> moved me up there when I was about two weeks old. So, so uh, <coughs> I'm strictly a resident of Duffield. I've, I've been fighting in this valley ever since I was in high school. I was on the basketball team. I, I remember one time at, at the time we didn't have a, a place for black young people to play in the gym. We had to play outdoors. So we played outdoors and then sit in the department of masonry, work and work the guys out there to build the building out there on Cedar Street. Which is now Stan which is Stanley White? No, this was this building was a uh, well, Cedar maybe. Street Reparation okay. Center. Okay. Well Mr. Sanson. Okay. I'm gonna let you share some of all of those experiences and everything a little later, but I want to get everybody introduced and then we're gonna jump right into that. My name is Alpha Mafia, a.k.a. It's Papa. <coughs> I was born in New Bern, five ladders, between Crane Street and Broad Street. I've been here off and on. I uh, enjoy living here in New Bern. My name is Mira Smith Banks. I was born here in New Bern on First Avenue between Second Avenue and Miller Street, and I've been here most of my life. My name is Ella Sampson, political Christian. I live at 10th Street, Sampson Street in New Bern, North Carolina. My name is Grace Hudson. I was born in New Bern, and we had to move on the kind of the first area of uh, Craven Terrace was built. So we moved on Washington Street in the Duffield area. And that's where we lived until I got married and I moved on New Street. Well, thank you very much. I really do appreciate each one of you being here today. And um, what I want to share with, I, I want to ask you some questions about um, segregation. And I know um, all of you are New Bern citizens and um, you endure some struggles during segregation. And I just want you to share some of those experiences with us. Um, I know the civil rights movement was um, was a great struggle by for African Americans in the late 1950s and uh, late 1960s, um, and the purpose of it was to achieve civil rights, those equal to whites. And I know some of the challenges was um, employment, housing, um, education, access to public facilities, 
the right to vote, and just free of racial discrimination, period. So I want to, I don't know, I'll start with Mr. Sampson, or maybe I'll start with Ms. Mary, since Ms. Mary here is the, she is the leader, I'm going to put her as the leader of the pack because she's the oldest. <laughs> and I just want to ask you, Ms. Mary, what may have happened in your family or to you um, that motivated you to become a part of the civil rights movement? Well, my family, as you would say, part of us were slaves, part of my family were slaves. And then my daddy was really patriotic. Um, my great grandfather was in World in the Civil War, and my father was in World War One, and he got gas over in World War One. And um, you, at that time, things were tight. It wasn't like it is today, but it was very, very tight. And we lived at meager expenses. Um, since he was really patriotic, and I want to say this, a lot of in my family was patriotic. I had a brother that, two brothers that was in this service mm -hmm. of the army. One was in there for 28 years, and we had struggles. We, we had poor means of big food, and for rent, and for clothes. And um, we saw a lot that people don't see in this day. The blacks always had a, a hard way to go. And uh, we would have to go down to <coughs> Miss Rowan's at that time. I thought they called it welfare. <laughs> and receive things and take a lot of big talk and go on. So we've, I've come from a long way. Well, thank you for sharing that. Um, I think Miss. Samson, Mr. and Ms. Samson might be our next two pioneers of, <laughs> I don't know which one of you may want to speak first or want to speak for each other or I don't know how you want to do it. I'm going to let y'all do it. <laughs> you got your own stories, I know. <laughs> what, 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 I'm really, what I was really impressed about when we were children was I was involved with the Smith the Samson, the Stocky families were involved with the Smith families. And 30th of May was a black thing. I, I, I found out here lately that this, they call it a white thing, but it was a white, it was a black thing that was out of there. And we, and we were the ones, little, little girls, we were the ones that they went to the soldier cemetery and put the flags out, every flag, and then the, over in the black cemetery, there two or three people yeah. over, over there. We, we, we five o'clock in the morning, we, we, we did that. Mm -hmm. And then we would come, go home and put our little white dresses on, put a blue ribbon around there, and go back and we would march. And all along the streets, the black people had, had food and everything selling it. And the white stuff, this, this is what we did. But our people were the one that did the speaking. That's what I'm so impressed about, and I, I have never forgotten it. Mm -hmm. So that that motivated you to oh, get oh, yes. to get started in the peace of the rights movement. We had a family that were that were involved in it. In in, in, in those days, now they call it the Board of Aldermen. Okay. We were young, they called it the council. The council. And my daddy mm -hmm. always went to the council meeting. For some reason, I would be the only one of the children. But always stay, wake up, and wait for him to come to see what went on down there. And, and even though they, they, they had, I keep hearing people talk about Moore's barbecue and how much more wouldn't let black people come in this place. But you know, I never experienced that. For some reason, when my daddy was a cement fisher, finisher, and he was a mason, and he was very, very popular. In those days, I'm kind of how smart the black people were. They had to work under the white people. 
and, and he was one of the he was one of the one of the best cement finishers, and he's, he could read he could read his name and write, but he read those those blueprints that anybody, and and we never had the problem of going to a white person's black back door. The years people had to go to the back door and in the ground to see the people. When we met now, they would tell us if they tell you go come around, go out to the back door, come back. We never had the experience that. And, and what I can really remember when we used to work, work for the white people taking care of the babies, and that was Sonic Theater down there. Black people could go, not go, but guess what? All the maids could go down there and I would make the every movie. Oh, right. This is what I mean. Do you want to go next to Um, I never went to a public school. I went to the Catholic school. So when we was uh, small, my mother would go to the rummage sales. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to call them. And she would get our clothing from there. And uh, at Christmas time, we always got a bag of clothing from the school. So I don't really run to um, too much integration until I got married. And that's when the problem started. You couldn't ride the bus. Mm -hmm. If you rode the bus, when a, pop, a white person came and didn't have a seat, you'd have to get up and stand up so they could sit down. And uh, I was glad for the integration part because it's a lot I don't want to repeat, you know. And um, when my children started school, they started school at Catholic school, but it got so expensive that I had to take them out and put them in public. And um, they all graduated, except one. And he had to go to work. And uh, I have 10 children. All of them graduated except one. But he had to go to work. It was nothing like um, you lay in bed. You knew the importance. You and your husband yes. knew the importance of education. They had yes. to get an education, and thank God, all of them went. Um, I had one girl to <clears throat> go in the army, and I had two navy, one. Air Force, and they all was raised to work, <laughs> not to lay in bed or walk the streets. They had to work and still working. Mm -hmm. Mr. Barfield or Mr. Samson, Commissioner Samson. Yeah. <coughs> And let's kind of speed it up because I got some uh, other questions I want to ask you. And we're on an hour time span, I think, here, okay. Ms. Colleen. So. But, but a lot, uh, when I was a small boy, I was, I say I was about nine, even nine years old. I had, I, I was, went downtown with my mother, and I went, I was thirsty, so I was looking at, where the water fountain was, and I saw a water fountain up there, white, so white water, and I saw black water. I what no black water, but I'd never seen it in black water before, so I went and drank that white fountain. 
and my mom said, no, you can't drink out there. I, I was a little child, so I, I didn't have no idea of things was like the girl at that time. How old you? Can you remember you think about how old you were at that time? I'm about, about eight or nine. Okay. Because uh, I, I worked at the uh, I began working at uh, uh, McClellan. I was I was 11, 11, year, 11 years old, and I, when I was working down there, then they found out that they have a social security card, so they terminated me employment because I didn't have a social security card. But I always worked when I was small, my mother, grandmother took me out there in all kinds of fields. In back field, cotton field, potato field, and they taught us how to work. My grandmama taught me how to hang the back of, in the barn. My, my, my granddaddy, one of my granddaddy was a Portuguese, he came from Portugal, and my other granddaddy was an Indian. And, and Tell me, I still got family living out of Corrigan, but I, I don't know him though. But coming up as a child, I decided I, I was going to make something out of myself. And, and I, found, I found out that the, the black teachers in, in, out, out at our school, they, they were a little afraid of too, because if your family didn't have anything, they didn't even pay you all no mind. And, and, and I remember when you take my cousin and I out, when, when we was in sixth grade, one of the teachers, the teacher of sixth grade, she used to keep us in every day and be the set at our, uh, we call it activity time. Uh, we always had a special time to go out and get some exercise. And, and, and teachers, all, all, I had one good teacher out there that was Grover C. Fields, the principal, and he was one of the only teachers that gave me incentive to really hang in there. Okay. And, and he would, he would, even when I married my wife, he, he would uh, always take a, a liking to us and would even bring groceries by that time. We had a big family growing up, okay. and, and they were, that's wonderful. He was a, he, he just looked out for us. That was only black, I, I thought a lot of that black man because he, he was a person that you could look up to, a person that had respect, a person that loved the community. He wasn't like a lot of the other, other black or A lot of them, if they had something, a lot of them didn't hardly want to pay any mind. I'm going to tell like it is. But uh, the law, the law was that so, so blessed to me, I, I I faced a lot of problems when I was coming up, but I, I tell you, I, I, I decided that I was going to hold on, hold on. We organized the Concerned Citizen, it was, I think it was in 79. Well, Mr. Sampson, I wanted to stop you right there because that's another question I want to get into. Uh, okay. Thank you. And we have uh, Mr. Farfield here. I want to share what motivated you or what happened in your family or to you that made you become, wanted to become a part of the civil rights movement? Well, my grandfather raised me, you know, C.C. Summers, and it had a man called Steve the Blanket Man. Mm -hmm. And this particular day, Steve showed up, wanted to collect his money, and he disrespected my grandmother. So I told Steve, if you don't get back down the road, something's going to happen. And my granddad always said to treat a person the way that you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't treat that man the way because he, he, he preyed on the black community. And a lot of blacks didn't know how to read and uh, he could cheat them. But my, my whole life, I've been helping people mm -hmm. because I know one thing, if you give, you're going to receive it. Now, uh, I don't know you want to talk about uh, God 29, you know. Excuse me? When we talk about for God 29? Well, we'll get to that. Okay. Yes. Um, Let me say okay. this. When I was growing up, we had gardens. Just about every family would have a garden that they could 
plant vegetables and they would grow the collards and cabbage and cucumbers and then they had a means of preserving some. Mm -hmm. Here, here now we call it canning, but they called it preserving. Mm -hmm. And they would put up these vegetables in jars and cans, and that's how we would have a, a lot of food. Mm -hmm. And then it was a man that came around, his name was Mr. Scott, that's all we knew, Mr. Scott. And he pushed the wagon up and down the street. And he would come by, and you could get a whole big pan of fish for about 25 cents or 50 cents. And that's how we survived. And we work in the fields. Oh, I picked a many a bean, worked and handed a lot of tobacco, and dug white potatoes. That's how we survived. But one thing about it is they said we had to go to school. And we went to school, we walked to school. Then we had to walk back home and get lunch. Then go back to school. And at that time, some of the teachers that were kind of uppity, they, they didn't want to mess too much with the poems. And they would skip over and make a big difference. Yes. And I sit there and look and I said, oh no. And we talk about it when we go home. But mama would always say to my dad, they don't know any better. You're going out there to learn. So you all accept what's going on. And all of us graduated. It was six of us when we graduated. Some of us went to college. Some of us couldn't stay because they couldn't keep us in. But it was instilled in us, you got to be somebody. And as uh, Susanna was saying, Five o'clock, she didn't say five o'clock in the morning, but five o'clock in the morning, we'd have to get up. We called it then 30th of May, not Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. And we had to go out and walk up to the National Cemetery on George Street. And then we would stick every grave out there. We didn't have no truck to come by and no <laughs> say parade or the flags. We had to stick every grave. And it, at that time, it would be cold, and that, the atmosphere was different. Right. It would be cold then and heavy dews. Our feet would be wet, but we would stick every flag to go back home, and she said, and put on the white dress, the little blue ribbon. Then we marched back up to the National Cemetery. And then she said, out there, they had, we had a service. The, the preachers would preach. And they would talk, we would sing, and then we would circle around the uh, unknown soldier's grave. And my father, being a part at that time of the Grand Army, that's why it was called the Grand Army, he had a rifle. And so I think it was three volleys of shots that he would fire. Uh, and then we would march back. And it was a lady named Miss Daisy Oden had a pony. I don't know what kind of horse it was, was it was a pony. <laughs> and she would have a flag up on the pony's ear. I don't know how she did it up there, but be up there. And when the music started, the pony would start dancing oh. and prancing. Wow. And that would lead us and, and we would have a band and and I, and we would just have a good time. And then she said the people would be sell, serving food and selling it all up and down the street. Wow. Okay. And so it was great. And then at Armistice Day, it was called Armistice Day, what they call it now, Veterans Day, mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. Right. We'd have another big set. Mm -hmm. But all those days were by the black. Okay. That was our day. Okay. And then I want to add this. We go downtown, and our stoves was Charles. Chris and my clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's what how we got our clothes and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we've come a long ways. Yes. But it's, it's, they've taken everything look like from the black. And it's, we kinda lost it. Well the 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 struggle is still uh, going, on. going on, yeah. Um what I want to, you know, each one of you share some experiences if during the Civil Rights Movement, 
Did any of you have the opportunities to meet any of the civil mm -hmm. rights leaders with mm -hmm. Dr. King, mm -hmm. yes. Rosa Parks, yes. and yes. Thurgood Marshall, yes. Jesse Jackson, I can go on and yes. on with yes. them. So if if you want to share that with us and and uh, kind of keep it a little brief because we got the you know, time limit here, but well, I, I mean, Mother King was the president of the SCLC, Southern Christian Leadership, mm -hmm. okay, and we belonged to on the Rolling Buckshot Nixon. And we went to, I went to, in 1962, I went to that convention in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. I met, I met Mother King, not, not in the crowd personally, All right. and his wife, mm -hmm. and Yolanda was the baby, and my friend Mammy Simmons and I just pushed the, pushed the baby, and we, and we were, they had hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands, but we, we ate to this church, and then we ate to the school, for some reason of the beautiful favorites. Oh. And then Jesse Jackson, that was the time that Jesse Jackson had the bread basket. And so, of course, we talked to him. Okay. And we young was the governor of Atlanta. Okay. We, we were young. And Rosa Parks, the one that started that stuff. Yes, in well, Oh, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Well, we were in the hotel, in her room, and Miss Valor Jones, it was four grown people. We went to, went to William Buckshot Nixon. Okay. We went to Atlanta, Georgia. And man, Miss Valor Jones and I, she had this big thing inside me when I had never saw before. And, and we were up there, laying up there, talking to her. And, and the people that we were speaking about, we met them one on one and we talked to them one on one. So you saying you were in you were in Miss Rosa Parks bed? Oh sure. Wow. Oh, I bet yeah. that was a great experience. <laughs> And, and, and when the march on Washington was in 1963, right. I was praying the baby, the baby boy. Okay. And I went to that. And, and I heard everything that Martin Luther King said. Okay. And, and he, once, once he came down to Greenville, okay. but there were so many people there, we had to go in a side room and buckshot this and went in there. And, and they, you know, people don't give him much credit, that was a popular man. Mm -hmm. He's the one who caused a lot of these things for us. Right. And, and I tell you, and, and he went to Southern Rome and they said, he is buckshot Nixon, and oh, I'm so happy. So back from Newburgh, mm -hmm. I gotta give, give one more shout out for okay. Reverend Hickman. Oh yes, Reverend W.G. Hickman. Mm -hmm. Yes, that was the one, every time he went up, somebody, a whole, whole lot of people to come to a rally, I hope the Lord let me, do, let me be the one to get everybody to the rally. Okay. And, 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 and Hickman was the first one that ever stepped in that hotel downtown Holiday Inn. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. You've given me some information that I didn't know. Did you have anything to share with me? <laughs> but we went through trials and tribulations to get these yes. kids oh, no. where they are now. Yes. And some of them will say, well, I wouldn't have done that. Uh -huh. I would have done. No, you wouldn't. We have taken mm. hardship, um, discrimination, yes. names, mm. but we didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. We didn't say a word. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had taken my son, he had got hit in the eye with a baseball at school. And the eye doctor was over the clock's building, mm -hmm. and I was walking, he, he, his eye was covered up, and I was walking him past Chris's, and the white people was lined upside the street calling you all kinds of names, mm -hmm. and I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. We have endured mm. so much mm. to get you kids where you are now. When a mother says they would lay their lives down for you, oh, that was we the did. Amen. We was prepared to lay down our lives in order to make Things better mm -hmm. for future yes. generations.
And I know that was hard for you. Yes. And I know it was hard for all of y'all oh, yeah. to endure some of those struggles. And what makes me, when you made that statement, it makes me think about what Dr. King says. We're going to do this peacefully. This is going to be mm -hmm. a peaceful uh, <coughs> rally. And y'all, Oh, y'all obeyed Dr. King and you kept yes. it peaceful. And I know that was a, that was It uh, was hard. Yes, yes. Because we could have lashed yes. out yes. and mm -hmm. made it worse right. for some of those that was coming behind us. And it's still right. Yes. But it's better. Yes. Then it was. Oh, yeah. right. let, me tell, let me tell my story because you know. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. Time, uh, when I was 13 years old, uh, I had a place called the Anarchy Store in Five Point. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, we had our little cart, uh, coal, the uh, coal yard was on the other side, and a uh, feed house. Mm -hmm. and, and the police used to run us away from there. Mm -hmm. Then we had shoe shine boxes. Mm -hmm. So we go downtown, they ran away. But my enjoyment when we had 29 black kids from JT Barber High School. And we called ourselves now forgotten 29, because a lot of y'all don't remember this year. And I was one of the ones that got uh, put in jail down clock drugstore. And uh, the lady asked me, did I want a vanilla? I told them I want a vanilla shake. Mm -hmm. They were laughing at how and Bratchett mm -hmm. standing on the side. And uh, they picked us up, carried us this building upstairs. And Chief Pierce was the ex um, military Marine. And this white guy jumped on my back. Yeah, he did. And the police were this close to cuz there. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't do nothing. And I broke the uh, peace stand to non-violent, you know, because he was choking me. Exactly. You know, <laughs> but, it, but anyway, uh, we got together at J.T. Barber, 29 of us. Uh, Mr. Booger was our principal. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, y'all don't come to school. You're going to get in trouble. So we said, trouble's already here. And uh, I, I think about what John Wallace said, law and all. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what that means. Mm -hmm. They get the law, and you take the order. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we we've done real well for the 29 kids, and a lot of our parents lost their jobs. I lost my job. I work at Stanley Jewelry. Charles Bell is working at uh, Joe Hamilton Drug so wow. He lost his job, but still we had the whites to support our situation. Mm -hmm. You know, under under the table still. Yes. And, you know. So everything went good until until when you could walk downtown, like Mr. Sampson said, you couldn't even use the bathroom, mm -mm. but you had to take your money. So like that tell kids today, you can be anything you want to be, mm -hmm. but the most important thing, you got to respect yourself. That's right. You know, and this is one thing my grandfather always taught me. When he died, he was 90 years old. So I learned a lot from him. I remember on Broad Street and Crane Street, uh, one way, going down, coming up. Mm -hmm. I wasn't no four lane driving, no going. We used to run to the island and peep out to mm -hmm. see who, you know. But anyway, I tell all these kids, if you never do anything, make sure you respect your parents. Right, because my mother ain't gonna tell you nothing wrong. Right. So I say to all y'all sitting over there, you got a good mother, you got a good father. So, you know, respect your parents. They're hardworking people that have done a lot for this community. I'm proud of them, you know, so. Uh, Ms. Barfield, can you share with us, though, I, I know you were part of the Crescentian. Mm -hmm. Yes. So can you share a little bit of that with us? Well, see what happened. Uh, they talked about Reverend Nixon. Reverend Nixon was a good man also. Mm -hmm. But Reverend uh, Hill at St. Peter Church was spot for our for our thing. Buckshot came a little later on. That's that's sad like it is. But he done wonderful thing. Can't take that away from him. But Reverend Hill always said this here, non violent. Mm -hmm. That was his thing. 
And at uh, St. Peter Church, that's where we had our meeting. Mm -hmm. And it uh, was 29 of us. I was one of the ones that went in the clock, and the rest of them went to uh, Chris. But the most important thing, we hit them hard during Easter time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, but you didn't keep everybody out. Yeah. And we had people who come to our meeting, and they know every move that we made downtown. Every move. Mm -hmm. But they can't say that we, we come there slop because we were shocked that day. <laughs> <laughs> we had our best on, we had a school book, and we had the Bible. And the main thing, what we say, if you trust in the Lord, and that's what we used to sing, Reverend, to Reverend, he amazed us. Sing prayer, you know. These kids now don't pray. Some of them, you know. So I'm proud to be one of the 29 kids and going on record, we're trying to get a marker now okay. in front of our uh, clock building. Oh, okay. And I was cut last year. They recognized me for 50 years of service. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know. But I still say, Mr. Sampson, Miss Grace, this lady, over there, they've been running forward. They've been talking about what you talk about, they're thinking about you. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Sampson, real key. Hold oh, no. on. Oh. Thank you for your work. Thank you. Thank you. All y'all. Thank you. Now, yeah, go ahead, I, I just uh, want, want to uh, say about uh, the wall of poverty. Now that you might remember about the wall of poverty. And we had their, uh, had, had an office on George Street. And mo most of those people that were in that office, most of them was black people. And to, re to get the service out to the community, we couldn't get the service out to the community. And, and my wife and children, they went out there and picked it. <laughs> place on George Street. Okay, so no, the one on George, they were all, uh, used to be there, help some. Oh. Yeah, they, they, they went there and picked it. That, that wall of poverty, trying to get the services out to the different communities. And, and uh, another thing I have about the overall projects, we had the concern systems were organized, like I said, and, uh, 79, and we decided, I was the president, but I lived in the project. So we would have a lot of problems with the project place where the office that now, they didn't have no lights out in that big field, mm -hmm. glass all over the project. And so the, we decided that we were going to have a, a march at this office building downtown. And we, we organized that meeting and most of the people that were people that had a little prestige a little money they, they decided that they had to work they couldn't they couldn't be in the market mm -hmm. and so we what we did we had all the women and that was the two men that was sl Sanderson, you probably know him yes. and myself okay. that was the only two men we had and all the rest of the women we went marked around that housing authority building downtown came on back uptown. Concerned Citizens was a, is still a great organization. We, we, we went down to all the board meetings and we gave the board our concerns about what was going on in the community and let them know that we still need help in our community. So, yeah, so uh, it was a great, you know, it's so great. I always remember all the work that the women were doing at that time, the men, most of the most of the black men doing, doing, when I was coming up, they, they, a lot of them was out partying. The white heads go out there and get checked and <laughs> get anything. But then I had, my daddy was kind of sorry too. He wouldn't bring his money home either. So, and, the, and, and, and the people had to really, the women had to really work hard. They faced a lot of obstacles. The women been facing obstacles to raise obstacles to raise their kids for a long time. They they've been just about the head of the family. Right. They had to make all the important decisions to get keep the family going. <laughs> I, I I saw my mama how hard she worked. My grandma, mm -hmm. from my granddad, he died when I was I was three years old. 
But my grandmama, she took over, we had a big family. My, my aunt, aunt had my children, my aunt had 21, 22. 21 children. And, 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 and all, of us, all, all of us was in one house up there in Deputia, but we lived and we learned how to survive together and, and, and continue the, the women's work. But a lot of that husband we had, my, one of my aunt had a husband that was in service. And, and, and that was the only one that had a service home, man. He, he was a nice guy. But most of those guys that were hanging around Newman, most of them, they felt like they weren't married. A lot of them did. They had a few few men now in the community that, that held up that family, but the majority of them didn't. They was out drinking and they, they was out having a big time. Okay. Throwing the money away. But Mrs. Sampson, do you read? You remember when uh, that plaster fell on that child's head at West Street, and you had the meeting at Gilfield, and the woman come, the mother of the child came to one meeting, and she was supposed to walk with us to the Board of Education, and the police stopped us on New Street. There was only two men <laughs> and asked us, did we have a permit? And you said no. And they said disperse. And we dispersed. But there was five women <laughs> that kept on going to the Board of Education, which was on New Street, and uh, that was Charlotte Bright, myself, uh, Ruth O, and uh, there was two more, Ruth Milton, and they're all dead now, but me. You know, <laughs> that left me here to run my mouth. <laughs> but we went to the Board of Education. The secretary come out and told us that Mr. McDonald was not in. There was two doors, the front and the back. He had to come in one of those doors. And we sat in the hallway and uh, she would come out again and say Mr. McDonald wasn't in <laughs> and we didn't raise our voices and we sit there. Mm -hmm. Finally she come out and say he was in. Now we didn't see him come in the back door or the front. He was in there all the time. <laughs> and that's when that plaster fell on that child's head. And we went there to see if he would sit some trailers <laughs> after the school caught on fire. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to ask. The others are young. Know, Mr. Barfield shared with us that he had was part of what they call the jail ends. Did any of the, the other one? Did y'all ever experience any, any demonstrations, rallies, sit-ins, or anything that um, you was part of the jail end? Well, the jail end was upstairs. Mm -hmm. They got all us upstairs, and we were singing spirituals and had a good time, and. Uh, Told us that they didn't shut up, they were really going to take us to jail. Mm. But uh, I have to give this to the NAACP. Okay. They got us out of there. Uh, lawyer Glass was in town then, you know what I mean? And he was our lawyer. But uh, we had a lot of support. And we had a lot that didn't support us. Because, you know, when you when you working and people don't like you, say, I'm going to find you, you got to find me, you got to do something. That's, that's fake facts about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it ain't saying that you gain with the uh, issue, mm -hmm. but the issue is, you know, family come first. Right. And uh, we had some, had some white folks give some money. 
-hmm. under the table, you know what I mean. Right. And uh, what I was saying to my fellow uh, classmate, they called they call me enforcer. That's what they call me. <laughs> and I said, man, and ladies, there's some ladies too. We just have to pray. I'm serious now. Exactly. Uh -huh. Prayer will answer yeah. things. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if y'all seen the movie, uh, Mississippi Burning. Yeah. And that lady on the hands sing the song, Walking. And say, you walk, you walk with faith and God see you too. That's the truth. Because we saw us too, because, you know, we had people throwing urine on us, spitting on us, cussing us out, calling you everything but a child of God. But still, what about the, the actual dogs? Oh, no, we, 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 we didn't get no dogs. Okay. Oh no! Now after I left, I left when in service. Uh, Mr. Bernard White, uh, Barbara Lee, they they uh, start doing things with Miss Sampson on the hours in service, and I left, you know. But uh, I said, come back home, do what I can do. Miss Sampson, God and Parrot, God God and Parrot, the one that had that store, on that store on the corner. So, so in a way. We we would be into, we wanted somebody black to be, be a cashier, and if we were marching by a feed store one night, they put all out there so people could the children could slide the door open, slide down. But God, and, and, but one thing about it, God hired didn't hire the ones that were qualified, but he took the girl that worked for him, which was the other midget. He took her and he put her in the cash behind that cash register. Mm -hmm. Thank God, and she was a real good one, though. But at least you got that part accomplished. Okay. Well, I want to. I want each one of you to. Um, I know you're leaders, great advocates of the African American communities. And can you give us um, the organizations or groups or, or that you're I, part of, or that maybe were a founder of, or Organize and contribute to. I am the coordinator for the community watch in the WPL area. Okay. Been okay. it ever since. Mm -hmm. They we formed the building right across the street. The tax building. Mm -hmm. the Upstairs. Okay. Okay. With Susan House, yeah, mm -hmm. and Bernard George, and all of them. Okay. And we formed it there, and I'm still wow. working with the Double Field Community. Okay. And I know you've had some involvement in other organizations. Uh, can't you want to list some of those? Uh, give us. Mm. I've been um, the only part that I consider as being important to me was the school system. I um, went to Duffield School, J.G. Barber. I worked with um, Trent Park. Um, just about every school that my granddaughter went to, I was in, involved there for my granddaughter. And uh, I come out of the school and I, uh, my mission was to keep the children safe. So I come out of the school system and I stood uh, on Hazel Avenue for 11 years mm -hmm. trying to keep those children safe oh, wow. because there was a lot of men that was taking children and the parents had to work. So wow. I stood there for 11 years wow. Wow. and protect them children. And I didn't ever have any problems with them. Their mothers would be going to work, say, 
get out and <laughs> and they would put them out and uh, there was four buses that would come through and I knew every bus driver before I would <laughs> let them kids get on that bus. Samson? Well, I was a, I'm a life member of the NAACP and the Queen kind of go to the league until it's bad. But with its concerns since it's since 1979, and I have a prison ministry, been on prison board for the last 22 years. I lived uh, 27 years before then at Calvary County, but now I'm at, at Craven County, 22 years on the board. And um, I have I was a hospice volunteer for 27 years. We didn't get paid, but we did the best job in those days. And we, I, I had a lot of, of experience with Bye-bye, bye-bye, Barbara Lee, and I, and Betty. We, we, we always did a meeting for the children. This one, one night, bye-bye. Uh, that was Mr. Bob, Betty, and I were the only ones. When you say Betty, you're saying Betty Sands, okay? It was raining, 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 and we went to the Board of Education, and we intervened, and we, what we went for, we won. Mr. Mr. Bob, you spoke for what we wanted, and we did a lot of things. We always go to school in a seat for what we did. So we have a lot of kids. I mean, it's a really sad rate, though. I mean, we were good to everybody. And? Now you want me to stay, I'm going to be your, your, your member. <laughs> I, I was going to get to that soon. <laughs> crying, crying, what? And she's the boss lady. Okay. And and, 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 fill in and, be, and be go to cause her. <laughs> well, I'm just an ordinary person. Boss lady. <laughs> I don't know how I assumed that name of boss lady when it came out. <laughs> I really have really been interested in religious field. Um, I believe if you train up a child in the way that it should go, that some of that training will resolve in that child. And so I am the vice press chairman of the Deacon Board at Star Zion Church. Mm -hmm. And I've been there all of my life. And I have taught quite a number of classes. I'm all, I have also been secretary of East Carolina Progressive Missionary Baptist Association. And I've traveled to the state and all around, and I'm still, still involved with the missionary department. Okay. I believe in helping people. It doesn't matter about what sex or what religion, but helping people. And I'm still doing that. And I, 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 I just thank the Lord that I can do that. Amen. And uh, I see so much that needs to be done. And I, if I can say something to help somebody or do something to help somebody, I do that. But at my age now, <laughs> I'm kind of slowing down. <laughs> and so I do what I feel like is right to do. And I become a part of that. Thank you. Ms. Farfield? Well, I've known everything. <laughs> you call me, I'm there for you. I uh, was district director for the state and NAACP for 11 years. Plus I was uh, president of the NAACP, the local chapter, and also I'm a lifetime member of the NAACP. And uh, I am the president of the African American Alliance. I'm the president of the uh, 1020 Association, you know, and uh, sit on the board, uh, police board for application. And I just, whatever, well, they leave me, you know, they call me, uh, Miss Sampson, she 
I tell her stop calling me so much, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh, she's a good person. We were good together. But like I can say, God has been good to me. I had four operations less than 18 months apart. My neck, L4, L5, carpal tunnel syndrome, and elbow. And uh, God had blessed me. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. But Reverend Jane Cleveland said, there ain't no way to tie. Mm -hmm. All right. I call by, I do all my work now by phone. <laughs> <laughs> he loves to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Man can't live by bread alone. <laughs> but I enjoy uh, working. And uh, my most important thing I like is Christmas time. Mm -hmm. So do uh, I. No, but I'm, I'm, no, we have, uh, we get baskets out at Christmas. And uh, it's been 30 some years we've been getting baskets out, so we have fed quite a few people. And uh, majority of my funds come from my friends downtown and uptown. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But uh, we feed people and help pay like the Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just like to know, I've been never on. I was president of the Consumer Citizen until I went to the county commission. So that was about, we was still 79, so I was, I came on the commission board in our, uh, let's see, yeah. I remember, I came, I've been out there 22 years anyway. 1996. 1996. So. And, and also, I, I was, before I came on the uh, board of commission, I was on the council governing board. You might probably remember council governing. Still on that board for about, probably about 10 years. Also, I was on uh, was the president of the Concerned Citizens, and also I was, uh, I, I also was, yeah, uh, I got so many things on mine. I was in the health club, I was been the superintendent, the superintendent of Sunday school for 30 years, and I was assistant for 10 years. And I'm still there trying to help those kids, because I'm, I, I'm reminded that kids need, need to start early with kids. I, I also tell the health department the same thing. It's no need of us going to OPAs. We need to stay on the ground level and get kids before they even get involved in drugs. And I've been preaching that for the last five or ten years that we need to start kids out early. It's all right to get those kids and stuff top and already on drill, try to get them off and get them stabilized. But start early, even if you have to go to kindergarten. Mm -hmm. You can't go in the home, go to kindergarten and keep those, get those kids straight down there. And when they get up, they want to be thinking about drugs. So I'm still fighting that battle. Mm -hmm. I also an engineer that's re-entry program. And you know a lot of re-entry program. I work with the county commissioner for about 12 years before we could get both votes to be able to start this re-entry program. And, and it started last year, that started last year. And we are, we are, we are along with the city, we are building the school with trades, all types of trades now on the offer to the kids that really interested coming back home and getting a decent job and be trained in a, in a position that they'll be able to operate in and get a job in, whether it's bricklaying, carpentry, electrician, plastering, <coughs> paint, in, any type of trade. And if they can go even further, we're going to work with them and go further. And, and trying to get, right now, trying to get get the kids to be able to 
go forth and be successful, take care of the families, take care of the wives, trying to train them how to be a family man. Now, I'm hoping they can get that in there because a lot of them taking it from the streets and treating the family the same way the street people treat their family. So I got so much, so many things wrapped up in what, what I'm doing. I, sometimes I forget some of the things that I am doing, right. but it's a job. And then I got a, I'm a sister to my wife. Oh, she, she, she's a fool prepared to take out. And she got me. I said, I can't do it. Got me working canning grocery like I'm a grocery boy. So. <laughs> she canning grocery all people all over. Not only in Dublinfield, all across town. So mm -hmm. she's a kind of person and, and she works. I said, I don't see how well I'm going to be able to do all I got to do and all she got to do too. So. <laughs> but that's what it's all about, yeah. sacrifice. And that's what I know each one of you sitting here today, I know you and I know that all your lives you have always given of yourself to help others. And I know that something that now you, a lot of you, as Mr. Sampson said, he don't really find the time to do all the things that you do. Y'all will still continue to help people. Um, I just want to, to say that from what I've heard from each one of you today, it tells me whether it's put down, it's on paper somewhere, it's on recording somewhere, it's on a record somewhere in someone's book or wherever, that y'all have contributed to the history of Newburn. Mm -hmm. Well, can I say this here? Yes, you can, sir. Uh, it's a sound from Miss Sampson. I got some news that 75 or 76 black uh, people were buried in the graveyard across mm -hmm. from uh, St. Peter Church. Mm -hmm. And the Ottoman during that time voted to move the body. And a green rule come out, wasn't it? Yes. And I, ain't that something? A dead person can't even live in peace. <laughs> Already dead, you know. But this is the type of thing that people, is. no child is born to hate. Mm -hmm. Hate is taught. Amen. You know, so all uh, y'all young people over there, ain't now the lady taking our uh, uh, thing. I already remember, whatever you say around children, they're going to repeat it. So, yeah. Whatever they see you do, they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that this is the thing that history, Newberry got a lot of history of blacks. Mm -hmm. Happy Hatch. Yes, right. he, made, he made a temperature that he never, this white man turned black. That's right. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. He made a, 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 a former and turned him out of right. Now this, this is history. He never did tell nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was a smart man. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we had a, a lot of good black people, good lot of white people that work together. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you work together, pray together, we can stay together. Amen. Uh, all right. And then you, uh, I want to just say this you remember uh, Mr. Bill Franklin that had this shoe shine ball. And what the fuck? Oh, Wood Yard. Wood Yard. Wood Yard. Right up by Johnny Clancy. I'm Johnny Clancy. And then we had a um, we had Mr. Steve Fogg up Broad Street that had this big produce place that he had vegetables and, and all that people would come in on the weekend and buy all these commodities. That was down there on the other side of the way. Uh, Mr. Hill had the first black drugstore. That was the first time I ever saw those pull out chairs <laughs> and all that. He had this black drugstore. And down a little farther, uh, Mr. Pollock, Frank Pollock, had a meat market mm -hmm. right there on Broad Street. And also. George Allen. Uh huh. And then a little bit farther, on the other side of the street, around there where mm -hmm. Armstrong, before Armstrong, we had. The Palace Theater, mm -hmm. all the movies. Right. And then down a little bit further, it was, um, what was that alley name? Barbara. Barbara. Was it Barbara? Barbara. Mm -hmm. right here, like. Barbara. Yeah, Barbara. Mm -hmm. That was down past Armstrong. Uh -huh. Barbara. But see, this is what, I, this is what we were saying. We, our enjoyment 
was on Friday night mm -hmm. and Saturday night. He was on my shop, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. During that time, on Broad Street, we had a lot of black people. Mm -hmm. A lot of black people. Mm -hmm. You know, but now we, we don't it's have it. Don't have none you know, of that. Let me say this, I'm going to shut up. Miss Reese Grocery Store. Right. Right. Yeah, I, you know, I remember she was, she, was good, she was good to black. Like, yes. 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 Five yeah. Five cents worth of flowers, five yeah. cents worth of milk. Yeah. My grandma used to send me over there, you know, she buy me some cookies before sure I go good. over there, you know. Uh -huh. But what I'm trying to say now, Broad Street look like a ghost town now. Right. Uh -huh. You know. So y'all don't remember all the five cents uh -huh. cookies and things, do <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> but probably when I was working at Cherry Point, I'd say that 30, 33 years. And out of 33 years, my part time job was EEO counsel. So I've done that for 15 years. So I got a lot of background in uh, discrimination. So we had a lot of classes. And so anyone I can help y'all, call me. You know, I'm not going to charge you, but we'll call you. <laughs> we'll, we'll make sure that we bring you a dinner. <laughs> when I worked in Algeria Park, I was a union representative, and it was a little more. A lot of segregation going on down there. When I first went down there, it was a yeah, yeah, black and white restaurant. I went through the meal. I stayed out 25 years, and I was just glad to get out before I got in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they really didn't think you would deserve no high position. I knew blacks that were down there 35, 40 years and still labeled. Mm -hmm. A warehouse and that make two labor. And, and it was a crazy place. I was glad. I, I was so glad to get from now that place. You know, I saw a lot of discrimination going on down there. They had it so black were scared down there. They would they, they, they wouldn't help each other down there. Tell the truth. And it, it's it was, and you got to tell me it's worse down there now than it was when I was down. I said it can't be. Because I had to fight out there in twenty five years and I had to fight in twenty five years. Mm -hmm. Trying to Okay. Go ahead and those 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 days that we were talking about now, that was because we had God in the forefront. Right. And now, see, the problem is, for some reason or another, they put God on the shelf. On the shelf. Yeah. It's, that's, that's, that's what we got to get to him back then. Exactly. I agree with you 100%, Ms. Hanson. Um, I just thank each one of you for coming out today and sharing your stories. This is just one segment, and I know a lot of you got more stories mm -hmm. to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you want to make another round table, we can do that as well. So you know, you can let me know if you want to come together again and tell some more of your stories. I would appreciate it. And I'm gonna leave here saying that I I can't even you say mean, one thing. <laughs> I can't even. I don't even think there's one thing that I can say that I feel has even come close to anything mm -hmm. that you five have experienced because I didn't go through that. But I do remember and it was it I do remember and don't know a lot about it, but I heard my parents and grandparents speak <coughs> on that when Dr. King got killed in nineteen sixty eight. Now I can remember that. But some of the other struggles that y'all have had and over the years I just don't I don't see how you have endured all of that, but I do know you did because you had, as you said in Sansa, God. That was, that was the answer. Have faith and have the faith and keep the faith. So I just want to thank each one of you again. Um, Ms. Commissioner Johnny Sampson, Ms. Alpha Barfield, Ms. Mary uh, Smith Banks, <laughs> Reverend uh, Arthur Sampson, and Ms. Grace Hudson for being a part of this um, session today. And I love all of you. I'm here to help you in any way that I can and call on you. If you One more me. thing I have, Bob. I, I, I have over uh, I have five bedrooms in my family. I, I never I was not able to go because I did not pass because of, I had a place on my forehead that wouldn't okay. let me okay. go. Okay. But I do have five bedrooms. Got a disabled bedroom right over there. <laughs> I got five Let that me say the veteran is Miss Barbara Sampson. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I Wait, know you had something to yeah. say. <clears throat> my father, my two two brothers, yeah, and then my son. Mm -hmm. They were all in the service. And then I forgot to say that my daddy used to press clothes <coughs> with an iron. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they he had something like a little bar, a little cleaning shop in the house, and uh. He used the brush and I don't know whatever that was in the pan, but he would clean the clothes and then he and his first cousin, Tommy Gason, they would press, they was called they was called the Smith for a cleaning shop. Oh. <laughs> and, and and they did good too. A lot what, of people what, came. What year do you think that around oh, I was growing up, I was about fourteen, fifteen years old. But he had to do something. Because things were so tight, right, right, right. and the government wasn't doing a whole lot then for trying to help, so he pressed and cleaned clothes. So that's the way things were. And but I had a a brother that was in the army for 23 years, Apple. and I had one that was in the Air Force, and then I had a cousin and a nephew in the Air Force. And I had a son that was in the army. And that's why I say I've always known about military right. life. Mm -hmm. Right, right. You are a true patriot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do want to ask this question, and if you don't want to respond, that's fine. But I want um, our audience to know um, the years that you have been in this fight, the, the years that you've been in this struggle. So, Mr. Sampson, can I start with you and ask you your age? Well, I need to find. All right. Mr. Barfield? Well, your, your age, sir? Oh, <laughs> 75. Okay. Miss <laughs> Mary? I'm the youngest of you all. I'm 94. <laughs> wow. Miss Sampson? 85. Okay. And Miss Hudson? 88. All right. Mm -hmm. And you? I'm fi I'm almost fifty nine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Miss Mary said I just got here. <laughs> well, I just again, this has been a joy for me, yes. and I really, I really appreciate all of you expressing yourselves and giving us a little part of your, of your history and the the, the part that you played in the history yes. of this city, of the city of Newburn for the African American communities. Thank you again.